Everybody, this is Sue. Good morning. Sue Carson Saddle. <laughs> Good morning guys, um, so it's 7 o'clock, I have had some breakfast, just been praying, reading the bible, doing all that, um, so funny at the moment having to pray with my eyes open so I don't fall asleep, <laughs> um, anyway, side note, um, so today's an exciting day, it's a really busy day. But I wanted to vlog it because I think it would be really interesting for you guys. And I've had a lot of people ask me about um, this subject. So basically what is happening today is we are doing a whole day of saddle fitting for every single horse. So Sue Carson um, came up last night and we're about to start in a minute of like fitting all the saddles. Also, Wilf has a new saddle, which is so exciting. It's called the Secret Weapon and it's like amazing um, and I'm really excited that it's come today because I'm actually leaving for Addington tomorrow so it's perfect timing um, and that means that Molly and Joey and Belle and Barbie can all have a saddle now because um, I think Molly's going to share the saddle with Wilf and the others are all quite similar shapes I don't know what's happening um, but basically I know the youngsters are having Wilf's old saddle um, yeah, but it'll be exciting and we can ask Sue loads of different questions about saddle fitting um, because it's so important that the horses are comfortable. You can't expect your horse to go well if the saddle's pinching it. It would be like, oh, wearing, I was going to say shoes that pinch, but you know what I mean. Like it would be uncomfortable. It'd be like wearing a really like badly fitting rucksack and then somebody sitting in that rucksack and then having to do like athletics. If that makes sense um so that is what we're doing for most of the day and then i was meant to record a podcast this morning um seven till eight no yeah seven till eight but we actually decided to start earlier with the horses so i'm gonna have to do that later on i'm not sure when um because i normally do them really early on a wednesday morning but that's fine and then we're gonna go to the gym um and then we're gonna go food shopping and all that jazz. But yeah, the main chunk of the video will be saddle fitting. So let's do it. Oh, are those new saddle covers? Yeah. Little pocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sassy. Everybody, this is Sue. Good morning. Sue Carson Saddle. <laughs> and we're just making a list of what order we're going to do it in because there's a lot of horses. And the great thing about Sue as well is she watches you ride the horses in the saddle um, and make sure everything is perfect. So that is why it takes a little bit longer, but it means that everything is right. So that's what we're doing now. Yes, yes. he's 19.2 and Will is 19.5. Um, and then Joey and Belle. Oh, Joey and Barbie. So because some of our horses are sharing saddles, because um, there's so many of them, horses I mean, um, we are going to just measure them all, figure out which saddles work with which horses, because they did get measured but that was six weeks ago, so we need to re-measure them to check they're still the same. We're going to start with the four year olds who are currently sneezing. Uh oh. Monkey puzzle. 
Yeah. Mum just threw some monkey puzzles through the window for Eagle. What's it good for? So this is apparently good for lymph glands. I used to stick it, my brother used to stick this to me when I was younger. The amount of times that thing's not knocked out the window. <laughs> oh, I bet. Oh, I don't know, right, we've got a peg collar on us. Yes. And then we can stand her up square. Um, has she had any batteries? You can see this. And then... for doing measurements has to be sausage the most flinchy one um so what measurements are we taking on the horses uh what we're taking is we're taking a measurement two fingers behind the shoulder blade yeah and then one at the base of the withers and one just before the back of the saddle so then we can compare them how the horse changes each time we do a and the tape measure and then we're doing a weigh tape as well. Oh so no. We know whether the it's the way in. <laughs> and we draw it on a on the iPad so we can see how the horse has changed this time. I'll show you the iPad in a minute. Ma, yeah. you hold in a sec. I need to film and he's going to move. And the one at the base of his withers. So then I'm going to draw it on the outer. And measure five centimetres, five inches down from the top. So that I've got a measurement as to how much he's changed shape as a comparison from the last time we did him. So we measure across. So he's 21.3. Oh, he's grown. Yeah. Quite a lot. Yeah. Oops. And then we'll measure the one just at the back of the saddle. Because if this one changes and that one changes, that alters the back angle of the saddle. And then the front one at the withers makes a difference to how stable the saddle is and how well it fits. If the tree is the wrong fit, it will make the saddle very uncomfortable for your horse. And it's very important they're comfortable. 23.2. And then we'll compare that to last time. So he was 17.1 over his withers. And the last time we measured him, uh, he's 23.7. So he's altered a little bit. So we'll just refit his saddle as we need to. Nice. So we just got to measure the two five-year-olds, but you now get the idea of measurements. So we'll wait till we move on to the next little bit. Jerry is more or less the same. Uh, Zach is a little bit narrower. And Barbie is a little bit wider. So. Um, due to weight sometimes or? Bit weight, bit muscle. Uh. Um. So we are going to first do Wilfred, we're going to fit his secret weapon to him and then we're going to readjust Eagle's one and then we're going to look at the youngsters and see which saddle fits which. Two, and then if a saddle falls to one side, 
rather than taking the southern wedge to the right, we would use the first and fourth on the left, and the first and third, or the first and the second, those two, on the right, so we could pull the saddle so it would be central. Well, you're good at this, aren't you? You well practiced <laughs> we in front of a try. camera. <laughs> And then the reason that saddles slip to one side is very often that horses are not symmetrical or riders, so the saddle is only an interface between the horse and the rider. So then we're going to use the tick around girth, which has got the rubber plate underneath, and it sits one girth width behind the elbows, which then gives the saddle more stability and also gives the horse total freedom in its shoulders. And you also put it two fingers width behind the shoulder there, don't you? The, the saddle. saddle? Yeah. When you find the tree point, which I've put my hand up here, the tree point is actually here, and that, so the tree point is here, yeah. so then you find the shoulder blade, and the tree point needs to sit two fingers behind oh, that okay. shoulder blade, cool. to allow the horse, again, freedom of movement. Nice. All about freedom of movement. Oh, and if you're wondering what these are, piping thing it's because um, there's air in there but we'll explain that later mum is camera crew today for when i'm on ponies so i'm checking the height here i'm checking that we've got some room in the shoulders i'm just going to put a little bit of air in just to cushion in a little bit more so i'm going to put some air in each of the front of the finger lily just to make sure that my pipes are clear and they are. So then I'm going to take these two clips off, which then means the air is free flowing from one front bag to the other. So that will then set to his particular shape because no horses are symmetrical like ourselves. Oh, that's clever. I'm so going to learn so much today. We've got the, the problem <laughs> is now in the middle of it, and I've got nice freedom in his shoulders. So then I'm going to clip the pipe. So now they're sealed and the air will stay in each individual bag. Right, let's see if we've got the balance now right front to back. The saddle can only be level at one pace. So with the dressage horses, we fit them level at trot. Um, if they canter a little bit croup high, we do fit them level at canter. With the jump saddles, we fit those level at canter. But you can't have it level at stationary, walk, walk, trot and canter. You have to pick which pace you want it absolutely level at. Right, here we go. So, I was debating whether to put this in or not because it's meant to be like a vlog on the saddle fitting, not on me being an emotional wreck. Um, I'm really sad because, oh, basically we've got Abington, we're leaving for it tomorrow. And I haven't had a lesson for I literally don't know how long, like a very long time. And um, because it's the first time I've like done this level, I just haven't, I don't know, I just feel so like, feel completely unprepared. And the reason I'm probably really emotional is because I've been working like 15 hour days and I'm just so tired um, and I haven't had any it's not even that I don't have time for training it's just I can't like sort it out because everyone's very busy which is like I understand it but it's also really hard because I want to be like the best rider I can be and it's just hard to do it if you're not having training um, and these shows are like super expensive and I just don't, oh, I just don't want to go waste it. And I probably just got upset because um, Sue's a really good trainer as well. Um, and also a judge and stuff so she can see things and it just made me realise that I dropped the ball with my riding which sucks a lot but i need to pull myself together because we've got like six other horses to do so i'm gonna stop this now and might not even put this in 
but I just wanted to record it to show you the reality of life. Joy. <laughs> so Eagle is up next and I'm going to try and get mum to film more of what actually is going on because I don't know if she did much or will. But this is just a refit, so this is his old saddle, it's just checking that it's all still fitting. Um, what are you doing? So what I'm doing now is watching Olivia ride and looking to see whether the saddle is sitting straight. Um, this horse is a little bit slower on his left hind, so therefore he tends to throw the saddle to the left. So what I've done is I've held the front across and clipped it so the front airbags are holding the saddle across um, and then I've used the straps so that you've got the first and fourth on the right which one will pull it to the right and then I've used the first and the third on the left to let it go. So those are the sort of things that we can do to help keep a saddle absolutely symmetrical because unless a rider and a horse are 100% symmetrical which none of them ever are the saddle is only an interface between the rider and the horse so it will follow the table we're putting it on i.e. the horse's back So eagle saddle is done and we just tipped it so um it was a little bit lower at the back so it because what it was doing it was pushing my legs a little further back and then tipping me forwards which isn't good because he's naturally on the forehand um so we've now changed that over a little bit and it feels much better i can have my leg closer to the girth um and feel like in a better position so that was really good that was nice quick and easy and now we're going to do molly who is a five-year-old you guys know that um and he's going to be fitted now. So one of the saddles that fits him best. So three we can choose. Yeah. Molly! We're ready. I've got over myself, by the way, everybody. I'm much calmer. It is just one ride. Don't play the victim. Do something to improve it. And also it's a moment in time, so. We'll chill out. So Will's saddle does fit really well, but it's tipping me forwards a little bit. So we're trying Eagles on, which is a little bit narrower, um, but will probably put me in a better position, but we're just gonna try and see. You never know until you try. So with this horse, what we've actually done with the saddle, we've had the saddle so that it's a little bit high at the front and dropped down at the back. Because at the moment he's having a growth spurt, so he's gone a little bit high, higher behind. Um, and then once he levels out again, we'll level the saddle out to fit his back angle um, as he keeps changing shape, which is, which is so easy to do with the flare because we just lift the front, drop the back, and then when he levels out, we'll drop the front and lift the back. We've just come for lunch and... This is Olivia's cooking. That wasn't my cooking. I just... I said they weren't ready and I put them back in the oven. <laughs> it's Q&A time! No, it's not so good when she's lying. Are you um, oh, going to stay in not. here? Sure. Well, no, you can stay in here. It's just... Oh, no, you've got mine. You can stay there. Um, so we thought we'd do a little Q&A. Uh, this is what Mum does when I'm trying to record. <laughs> no, it's alright. I don't know why she got on the list. So we've decided to do a little Q&A because I asked you guys on Instagram this morning if you had any questions for Sue and we've had so many. Um, so I've picked 10 off my Instagram. Um, so the first one is how often should you check your saddles? You should check your saddles every three to six months. The Society of Master Saddlers are now recommending every three months due to the horse changing shape and also you need to make sure that the saddle is in true balance nice true professional um tips on buying a new saddle when you're buying a new saddle um, yes look around and see what's in the marketplace make sure that you try them when we do a saddle fitting it does take three hours so you should expect your saddle fitter to come and measure your horse get the whole history of your horse, i.e. lamenesses, 
um, and, and various problems that you may have had. Also to find out what injuries you've had that are going to affect your riding. Mm. And then you must ride on the saddles to, to the level of which you are either training and or competing so that you, you truly know whether that saddle is the right one for you. Nice. Um, are your air saddles ideal for asymmetric horses? If so, how? They are ideal for the asymmetric horses because they have four airbags in them, two at the front, two at the back, which then overlap in the middle to give you an even bearing surface. So when, when I have the clips off and the valve is open, it will then allow the air to free flow from one front bag to the other. So then we set it so that it is sitting and filling any holes that a horse has. Most horses have some holes. Nearly all horses are asymmetric, the same as humans. So yes, they work very well. Nice. Um, best saddle you have ever made? I think the new saddle that we range that we've just brought out called the Secret Weapon, um, which is allowing the horses to move even better. And watch this space. In the next two months, you'll have a Secret Weapon jump saddle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, how do you tell when your saddle doesn't fit? You need to, my advice to you is you need to measure your horse every month. First Monday in every month, if you get a flexi rule and measure your horse both two fingers behind the shoulder blade, mm. at the end of the base of the withers and just behind the saddle and weigh tape, you will know when your horse changes shape. Yeah. Um, so that, at that point you know to get your saddler in to check it. That's a good idea. Um, what do you look for in a saddle with, uh, what do you look for in a horse with wide shoulders, like saddle wise, fitting them? Um, I'm looking to make sure that the tree points are running parallel to the horse and that then, with the jump saddle especially, is that you can actually fold the front back which then allows the horse total freedom. With the dressage saddles with the air, it just allows the, ho the horse's scapula to rotate because it's hitting some, it's not hitting something solid. And that leads nicely into this question. Is it harmful to jump in a dressage saddle? I have got riders who jump in a dressage saddle. Obviously you can't get yourself into a true jumping position, but if you're just using it for pole work and small fences, there is no reason why you can't jump in a, jump in a dressage saddle. So glad I cleared that one up. Um, is there a real benefit for having a dressage saddle for flat work? Yeah, there is a real benefit because you need a saddle that's going to support you and help you, not something that's going to hinder you. So a jump saddle isn't designed to put you truly ear, shoulder, hip, heel mm -hmm. in balance with your horse. It's designed for you to sit in jumping position. So yes, it will help you enormously if you've got a correctly fitting dressage saddle that fits you and your horse. And that's exactly the same with a jump saddle. The saddle must fit both of you. It is a partnership. It's only an interface between you and your horse. Mm. And what about fitting a saddle to a youngster? We fit a lot of saddles to young horses. And the benefits of ours is that because we can widen or narrow the head, and we can alter the air. If you buy one of our saddles as an unbroken three-year-old, it will still be on the horse until basically it's Grand Prix. Wicked, love that. Um, difference in benefits from air to flocking? For me, obviously, I, I really, really like the air because I can alter the saddle as we've done this morning for Olivia, and you can balance it both front to back and right to left. So if you've got the young horses that we've fitted this morning, um, some are in a growth spurt at the moment, which is yeah. perfectly usual at this time of year. So they've become a little bit croup high. So what we've actually done then is able to lift the front and drop the back so that she's in balance and she can ride them effectively at this point. And then in two to three months time, they're wanting justing again because the withers will come up and the horse will balance, balance again. So it gives you huge opportunities. Mm. And um, another question is, is there an age the horse stops growing? So where you don't have to adjust the saddle? Horses never stop changing shape. I mean, my 18 year old Grand Prix horse 
in eight weeks changed one and a half fits. His work hadn't changed, his location hadn't changed, but he altered. So now a horse will never ever, in my experience, stop changing shape. So keep checking them, whatever So age. always keep checking your saddle. Ideally, regularly, and that is three months, six months maximum. Amazing. Thank you so much for answering all these questions. And if anyone wants to find you on social media or get in touch with you about having a saddle fitted, how do they go about doing that? Uh, you'll find us on Facebook, you'll find us on Instagram, and you'll also find us on our website. Cool. And um, my mobile's number's there if you'd like to ring me. I'll link it all into this vlog as well so you guys can go and have a chat to them. And they're super friendly, super easy, and uh, yeah, get in touch. So that went really well, um, we got all, how many did we do, six, no five, we got all five done which is good, um, baby bell didn't take very long actually because she's been not, not quite right in front and we've been trying to figure out what it is and um, she's got a splint so I think we are, well I know, we're going to give her six uh, four to six weeks off to let it settle um, which is fine because she's not even four yet she's four in July so it's not going to do her any harm she's super easy so I'm just going to throw her out in the field let her chill out like this is quite standard for young horses um, you know they're ready when they're ready and there's no point in her pushing her through that because it would just get worse so I'm currently going to make a podcast this is what, my, this, is what this is by the way um, so today's podcast is going to be on dealing with criticism, um, which is such a big topic and it's not even criticism from others, it's like criticism with yourself, kind of figuring out if it's constructive criticism, if it's de destructive criticism from people, like learning to filter it. So it's like a massive subject, so I'm excited to start recording this, a little bit apprehensive because I want to make sure I get all of it in, um, which would be good. And if you guys want to hear the podcast, because I know a lot of you get, like, you're like, wow, this is amazing, but then you're, like, not sure how to get hold of them. Um, if you go onto any podcasting platform, so either Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, Podbean's another one, um, Anchor is another one. There's loads. Um, I think they're on Alexa as well. So if you say, like, Alexa, play Olivia Tower's podcast, it'll pop up. Um, but yeah, so you basically go onto any of those and you type in Olivia's House podcast and you'll find all of them there. There's quite a lot up there already um, and I'm making one a week. So definitely go check them out. They're really cool. They're different to the vlogs. I go a lot more in detail with stuff. They're great for listening into, listening to in the car, when you're working out, when you're working out, when you're cleaning tack, when you're poo picking the field, whatever. Um, it's just a really good little boost of encouragement. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. And then, well, we'll see where we are after that. I'm gonna just do X, Y, and Z and you'll get better. She just wouldn't bother. Um, and I think that's something really nice to remember. Sometimes the people who seem quite hard on you, like the most hard on you, are actually the ones that want you to succeed the most. Um... <laughs>